Netherlands, a country known for its picturesque canals, vibrant tulip fields, and a rich cultural heritage. But beyond the surface lies a treasure trove of fascinating facts that often escape the spotlight. In today's video, we're diving deep into this enchanting land to unearth 15 things you might not know about the Netherlands. From its unique approach to transportation, to a city built on stilts, and even a village without roads, prepare to be amazed by the hidden wonders of this European gem. So, grab your clogs, and let's embark on a journey of discovery. Number 1. Most densely populated countries in Europe did you know that the Netherlands, despite its relatively small size, is actually the most crowded country in Europe? The Netherlands is home to more than 17.9 million people, and the population density is 535 people per square kilometer. To put it into perspective, the United Kingdom, which is significantly larger, has a population density of only 277 people per square kilometer. Just look at this. It's like comparing apples to oranges. But why is the Netherlands so densely populated? Well, here's the interesting part. Over 45% of the total population of the Netherlands live in a region called the Randstad. This area encompasses some of the most vibrant and bustling cities in the country, including Amsterdam, The Hague, Rotterdam, and Utrecht. The Randstad is like the beating heart of the Netherlands, drawing in people from all over the world. Let me tell you why. Amsterdam, the capital city, is known for its rich history, stunning canals, and vibrant culture. It's no wonder it's a magnet for tourists and residents alike. And then there's The Hague, the political hub of the Netherlands, where you'll find the Dutch government, international organizations, and beautiful beaches. Number 2. Dutch men are the tallest in the world. On average, Dutch men stand tall at 183 centimeters. That's a whopping 6 feet and Dutch women aren't far behind, averaging at 171 centimeters, or about 5 feet 7 inches. That's quite impressive, right? According to military records, the average height of Dutch men has actually increased by a staggering 20 centimeters over the last two centuries. You might be wondering, what's the secret behind this remarkable height difference? Well, there are several theories floating around, and they're all pretty intriguing. Some experts believe it could be down to genetics. The Dutch gene pool may just have a knack for producing tall individuals. Others point to their impressive healthcare system. With accessible and high quality healthcare for everyone, it's possible that this contributes to their overall health and stature. And then there's the diet factor. Dutch cuisine is known for its love of cheese and dairy products. Could this be a key ingredient in their towering height? Some think so. So, to sum it up, the Dutch might just have a winning combination of genetic predisposition, exceptional healthcare, and a diet that supports growth. But of course, it's not an exact science, and there might be other factors at play as well. Number 3. The first country to legalize same-sex marriage. April 1, 2001. The Netherlands, a country known for its progressive values, made history by legalizing same-sex marriage. Job Cohen, the mayor of Amsterdam at the time, orchestrated a beautiful ceremony where he married four couples at the stroke of midnight to mark this monumental occasion. Since then, many same-sex couples have happily tied the knot, celebrating their love and commitment. Amsterdam isn't just famous for its picturesque canals and stunning architecture. It's also renowned as one of the world's most LGBTQ-friendly cities. You'll find a vibrant LGBTQ community here, with a plethora of gay bars and clubs that cater to all tastes and preferences. Right in the heart of the city, you'll stumble upon a powerful symbol of LGBTQ history, the Homa Monument. It stands as a tribute to gay men and women. Number four, tulips are not native to the Netherlands. You see, when we think of tulips, our minds often jump straight to the Netherlands. However, these colorful blooms originally hail from a land far to the east, Turkey. These gorgeous flowers found their roots in the fertile soils of the Ottoman Empire. Fast forward to the 17th century, a time known as tulip mania. This was a gripping period in the Netherlands when the value of tulip bulbs soared to astronomical heights, creating frenzy in the market. People were buying and selling tulip bulbs like there was no tomorrow, and prices were rising faster than you could say, tulip. Despite this wild craze, tulips still weren't native to the Netherlands. 
They were simply a prized import. It wasn't until after World War II that tulips truly became intertwined with Dutch culture in an unexpected way. With food shortages during the war, the resourceful Dutch turned to tulip bulbs as a source of sustenance. These bulbs, rich in carbohydrates, were a lifeline for many families struggling to find enough to eat. And that, my friends, is how tulips firmly took root in Dutch culture. From wartime sustenance to a symbol of resilience, these humble bulbs have come a long way. Number five, one of the happiest countries in the world. The Netherlands consistently ranks as one of the happiest countries globally. Now you might be wondering, what's their secret? Well, it turns out they've got a recipe for happiness. With a high quality of life, fantastic healthcare system, and an enviable work-life balance, it's no wonder the Dutch are all smiles. Feeling safe and secure is something we all cherish, right? Well, the Netherlands has got that covered too. It's one of the safest countries around, making it an ideal place to live and visit. Whether you're strolling through the bustling streets of Amsterdam or exploring the serene countryside, you can rest easy knowing you're in good hands. The Netherlands is a melting pot of cultures. It's a place where diversity is celebrated and people from all walks of life come together. You'll find a vibrant mix of languages, traditions and cuisines, creating a rich tapestry of experiences that's truly unique to this country. The Netherlands public transportation system. It's simply fantastic. From high-speed trains to efficient trams and buses, getting around is a breeze. And the best part, it's eco-friendly too. So you can explore this beautiful country with a clear conscience. Here's another gem about the Netherlands. They've got a rock solid social safety net. This means that if you ever find yourself in a tight spot, the Dutch government has your back. From excellent healthcare to unemployment benefits, they've got programs in place to ensure everyone has a safety net to fall back on. Number six, Amsterdam alone has over 1,200 bridges. Did you know that Amsterdam alone boasts over 1,200 bridges? These bridges aren't just mere structures. They're the heart and soul of this beautiful city. They connect Amsterdam's 165 canals, creating a mesmerizing network of waterways that define the landscape. What makes these bridges even more intriguing are their stories. Some of them carry centuries of history, witnessing the passage of time and the city's evolution. Take a stroll along the canals and you'll discover bridges adorned with bursts of colorful flowers, turning them into living works of art. It's like a natural gallery right in the heart of the city. Stand at the crossroads of Reguliersgracht and Herengracht, and you can actually see 15 bridges at once. It's like a visual feast for the eyes, showcasing the stunning craftsmanship and design of these architectural marvels. Number seven, there are over 1,000 windmills. One of the things that truly defines the Netherlands is its extensive collection of windmills. Believe it or not, there are actually over 1,000 windmills scattered across Dutch soil. These towering structures are more than just picturesque. They're an integral part of Dutch history and culture. These incredible machines have a rich history of functionality. Back in the day, they were used for a variety of tasks. Imagine harnessing the power of the wind to grind grains or drain wetlands. That's exactly what these windmills were designed to do. One notable windmill, Molen de Otter in Amsterdam, is a prime example of Dutch ingenuity. This mill doesn't just grind grain, it's a versatile powerhouse. It's been known to power a sawmill, showcasing the sheer adaptability of these machines. However, it's not all smooth sailing for these ancient giants. With the urban landscape evolving, some windmills face a unique problem. They're getting overshadowed by taller buildings, making it harder for them to catch the wind. Imagine that. These windmills that have stood the test of time are now facing a new kind of challenge. Many of these windmills have found a new lease on life as tourist attractions. Take the Zanze Shans, for instance. It's a picturesque village where you can get up close and personal with some of these historic beauties. It's like stepping back in time. Every second Saturday and Sunday in May, the Netherlands celebrates National Mill Day. On this special occasion, some windmills that are typically off limits to the public swing open their doors, allowing visitors a rare glimpse into their inner workings. If you're itching to see Dutch windmills in all their glory, there's no better place than Kinderdijk. 
This UNESCO World Heritage Site boasts an impressive collection of 19 traditional windmills. It's like a living museum dedicated to the history and art of windmill craftsmanship. Number 8. World's Biggest Flower Exporter When we talk about the Netherlands, it's hard not to mention their dominance in the global flower market. Believe it or not, they produce 80% of the world's flower bulbs. And get this, the flower industry contributes over 5% to the Netherlands' GDP. The Netherlands boasts nearly 90% of the world's total area dedicated to tulip farms. That's around 11,000 hectares, which is like having 16,000 soccer fields covered in tulips. They churn out 4.3 billion tulip bulbs every single year. The Netherlands' vibrant flower fields are a major draw for visitors worldwide. Picture this, thousands of people flocking to witness the breathtaking bloom each year. One of the prime spots to experience this floral extravaganza is Harlem. This city is teeming with commercial flower fields and hosts an annual flower parade that's nothing short of a spectacle. And now, let me introduce you to a place that's straight out of a fairy tale, Kuchenhof Park, often hailed as the Garden of Europe. Imagine walking through the largest flower garden in the world, with a jaw-dropping array of around 800 varieties of tulips. It's a floral wonderland that'll leave you absolutely awestruck. Number 9. One third of the Netherlands is under sea level. The name, the Netherlands, literally translates to the lowlands, and it's not just a catchy name. The country earned this moniker for a very good reason. You see, the Netherlands is the flattest country in Europe, with nearly one third of its entire landmass sitting below sea level. That's right, one third. If you're wondering just how low we're talking, let me introduce you to Zuid Plaspolder. This area holds the record for the lowest point in the country, a staggering 6.7 meters below sea level. On the flip side, we have Valserberg Hill, which stands tall at 323 meters above sea level. 50% of the land in the Netherlands is just about one meter above sea level. Half of the country is living on the edge, quite literally. And 60% of the population actually resides below sea level by about five meters. Even Schiphol Airport, one of the busiest and most vital international airports in the world, is located over three meters below sea level. It's a testament to the Netherlands' incredible expertise in managing water levels and preventing flooding. So, how does the Netherlands manage to stay afloat, you ask? Well, it's all thanks to their mastery in dredging. They are world-renowned for their skills in excavating and removing sediment from water bodies, ensuring that their low-lying lands remain habitable and safe. Number 10. The Dutch consume the most licorice in the world. One of the sweetest secrets of the Netherlands is their absolute love for licorice. The Dutch have a serious sweet tooth for this unique treat. In fact, on average, each person in the Netherlands consumes about 2 kilos of licorice every year. That's 32 million kilos of this delightful candy devoured annually. That's like the weight of a small elephant for every single person. Now, why this love affair with licorice, you ask? Well, it's deeply embedded in their culture and has been for centuries. But that's not all, folks. Hold on to your hats because it gets even sweeter. When you step into a candy store in the Netherlands, you're in for a real treat. They don't just have one or two types of licorice. Oh no, they've got over 80 different varieties. And in Dutch, licorice is called drop. So you'll find everything from sweet and chewy to salty and firm and everything in between. Whether you prefer it soft and sweet or hard and salty, there's a drop for every palate. It's like a licorice wonderland for your taste buds. Number 11, home births are still popular in the Netherlands. Did you know that the Netherlands has one of the highest home birth rates in the developed world? Around 30% of Dutch women choose to deliver their babies at home. And this trend has remained quite steady since 1991's significant factor is the Dutch healthcare system. Unlike in many other countries, Dutch health insurance fully covers home births. This means that for many families, giving birth at home is not only a preference, but also a cost-effective option. While home births are covered, hospital births without a medical necessity might not always be. This creates a financial incentive for families to opt for a home birth, especially if there are no complications during pregnancy. It's an intriguing aspect of the Dutch healthcare system that sets it apart from many others around the world. Let's talk about the Dutch medical system itself. It's known for its exceptional care and thorough screening processes. Expectant mothers receive regular checkups to ensure the health of both the mother and the baby. 
These screenings are designed to catch any potential issues early on, providing peace of mind for families choosing a home birth. Another crucial element in the popularity of home births in the Netherlands is the presence of skilled midwives, known as verloskundige. These professionals play a pivotal role in ensuring a safe and smooth delivery at home. They're highly trained and experienced in handling various situations that may arise during childbirth. Their expertise provides families with confidence in their choice of a home birth. Number 12. Dutch own more bicycles than any other country in the world. The Netherlands is home to 22 million bicycles, which is actually more than the country's population. They've got an average of 1.3 bicycles per person. And you won't believe how this love affair with bicycles impacts their daily lives. Cycling isn't just a hobby in the Netherlands. It's a way of life. It's woven into the fabric of their society. It's one of the reasons why this country consistently ranks as one of the healthiest in the world. Imagine that, a country where almost everyone hops on a bike regularly. On average, the Dutch cycle about 2.9 kilometers each day. That's like cruising around your neighborhood, but on a bike. And get this, they use bicycles for over 25% of all their trips. To put it into perspective, in the UK, it's only 2%. The Dutch have something called a backfiets. It's a brilliant blend of a bike and a wheelbarrow, perfect for carrying groceries or even the kids to school. Can you imagine pedaling around with your little ones in a front-loaded cart? It's both practical and environmentally friendly. Number 13. The Dutch invented gin. In the 16th century, people were experimenting with all sorts of spirits. But it was the Dutch who took the lead in creating something we now know as gin, or as they call it, Ginever. They were pioneers in distillation techniques, using juniper berries and various botanicals. This unique concoction was initially used for medicinal purposes, a real health elixir, if you will. The Dutch didn't keep this amazing discovery to themselves. They decided to share the love with their British neighbors. You see, during the late 17th century, King William III of England, who was also known as William of Orange, had some Dutch roots. He held not only the English throne, but also those of Ireland and Scotland. So when King William III came to power, he brought a taste of the Netherlands with him. Gin. The Dutch gin quickly gained popularity in Great Britain. British people embraced it, and gin started to flow through the streets of London like never before. Gin became a part of British culture and history. Have you ever heard the phrase Dutch courage and wondered where it came from? Well, it's linked to gin too. During the Thirty Years' War from 1618 to 1648, British and Dutch soldiers would often share a drink of gin before heading into battle. It was believed to boost their morale and bravery. Number 14. Dutch National Anthem is the oldest in the world. Now, when it comes to national anthems, most of us might not give them much thought. But did you know that the Dutch National Anthem, Wilhelmus, holds a remarkable distinction? It boasts a musical history that dates back over four centuries. That's right, between 1569 and 1572, this iconic melody took shape. Let's talk about Wilhelmus. It wasn't until 1932 that it officially became the Dutch National Anthem. Imagine a tune that's been resonating through Dutch history for centuries, yet it wasn't officially recognized until relatively recently. Now, let's shift our focus to the lyrics of Wilhelmus. These verses were penned down at least 400 years ago. They contain a term that might be a little unfamiliar, dietse blood. This, my friends, is an archaic term referring to none other than the Dutch themselves. It's like a hidden gem in the anthem, preserving a piece of linguistic history. So, why use dietse blood instead of just saying Dutch? Well, this term roots us deep into the heritage of the Netherlands. It's a linguistic time capsule, giving us a glimpse of how people refer to their homeland back in the day. It's like a secret code that connects us to generations long gone. Number 15. A city build on wooden poles. Amsterdam, a city known for its picturesque canals, historic architecture, and vibrant culture. But did you know that beneath the charming cobblestone streets lies a remarkable engineering marvel? More than a million wooden poles, each extending a staggering 12 meters into the ground, support this entire city. You see, when Amsterdam was founded, it was on swampy land. The first builders faced a unique challenge, how to construct a city on unstable ground. Their ingenious solution? Wooden poles. 
These poles were driven into a solid sandy layer of the river floor, forming a stable foundation for the city. It's an engineering feat that continues to amaze to this day. And speaking of remarkable feats, take a look at the Royal Palace at Dam Square. It stands proudly on no less than 13,659 of these wooden supports. Imagine the precision and craftsmanship that went into this architectural masterpiece. Even the serene Vondel Park has its own secret. Some of the towering trees here are supported by these same wooden poles. These poles prevent them from sinking into the soft ground, ensuring they stand tall and proud. Nowadays, builders opt for concrete or steel poles in construction for even greater stability. But the legacy of those original wooden poles lives on, supporting the very foundation of this remarkable city. And there you have it, folks, the incredible story of a city built on wooden poles. I hope you found this as fascinating as I did. Don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe for more intriguing insights. Until next time, keep exploring and stay curious.